Hey guys, so today I will be bringing you a new vlog. This is going to be a special one because in this vlog, I'm going to reread the entire Fruits Basket series. Because I wanted to do a discussion on the series, I debated whether to do a vlog style discussion where I say my thoughts on the series while I read it or if I should just do like how I do my regular discussions once after I finished the series and then talk about it after in a more proper video but I thought a vlog style would be really fun and I can like express my feelings on it as I go because I really want to talk about this series because this is my favorite manga series ever and I've been really wanting to. So what I'm going to do as I read this series I'm just going to express my thoughts, my feelings, fangirl over it because <laughs> I think that'd be really fun. So I have read this series before. I've read it um I want to say three times so this will be like my fourth time rereading it and <laughs> I'm so excited to dive back into it. The particular reason why I want to reread the series is because the anime remake is coming out next month which I am so excited for you have no idea. <laughs> I like flipped out when I heard about that. It was getting a remake covering the entire story. Mm, I'm just so excited for it. So I just want to reread it before I see the anime remake um, just to kind of refresh my mind on this series even though I can remember everything about this series because I love it so much. So that's my plan. So I'm probably going to try to read one volume a day and then I should be able to finish this series before the anime comes out um, if I read one volume a day, which is really easy to do because these are super short. So how I'm going to do these vlogs is I think I'm after I finish a volume, then I'll like go over my thoughts on it and do like a mini review on the volume. Either that or I'll read a couple chapters and then explain my thoughts. If something like really big happens, then of course like I'll vlog it right away and like go over what just happened because there's a lot of plot twists in this series that I know I'll need to express my feelings on. Because of that, this is going to be a spoiler vlog. So be warned about that. If you have not read this series yet, don't watch this vlog. Um, if you want to read it, don't watch it because this is a series you should not be spoiled on. I don't want to spoil anyone for this series because there are so many spoilers that I don't want to ruin for anyone. Because it'll probably ruin the series for you and I don't want to do that. So just um, be warned about that. But after you read this series, if you want to come back to this vlog, you should do that. So I'm going to start on it right now. I'm going to try to read the entire volume in one sitting. Should take me maybe a little over an hour, so we'll see how that goes. And then I'll come back and express my thoughts on it. So I hope you guys enjoy this vlog. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to just reread this series and just express my feelings on how much I love it. <laughs> so I'm going to go now and I'll see you guys in a little while. My boy just showed up. My favorite character ever. It's Kyo. Oh my gosh, he's so beautiful. I know it's a drawing, but like, oh my god, I'm just obsessed with him. He is really like what makes this series for me. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love him so much. Okay, so I finished the first volume to Fruits Basket and planned out very nice because I am filming right now, so that's why I'm kind of like all formal and not like true vlog style. So this worked out perfectly. But anyway, let's discuss the first volume. Already off the bat, I got the feels right away and the story just started. I mean like the the first chapter I was like on the verge of tears. It's just like this manga series just does that to me. It's just so emotional even when it's not trying to be. It's just a masterpiece. <laughs> so let's talk about what happened. One thing I love about Toru is how much she loves the cat. Which I could relate to so much because I am a total cat person I've mentioned before. I'm wearing a cat shirt for Pete's sake. I mean, I'm obsessed with cats. So I could really relate to her because of that. She is the year of the dog, but she wants to be the year of the cat, even though there is no year of the cat. It's not a such thing. Like, uh, she's just so adorable. I would want to be the year of the cat too if it was a real thing. I am, I think I'm the year of the rat. Yeah, I'm, I'm the rat. So I am a Yuki. And I actually don't really like Yuki, but we'll get into that later. Yuki's fan club at school 
is so annoying. I hate how they pick on Toru for hanging out with them when Yuki and Toru's relationship is so innocent. There's nothing going on between them. They're just so jealous and so petty. They're even more annoying in the anime, honestly. In the manga, they're like not as annoying because I feel like the anime really showcases them a lot and I was always wanted to smack those three bitches so much. I just hate them so much and I don't get why they love Yuki so much in the first place because I don't like him. So I'm like, why do you like this boring dude? Why? I swear they only like him for his looks. I mean, he is handsome, but he doesn't really have that much personality. I find it so sad how Toru is just living on her own. And she has two friends, which is Uo and Hana, and she doesn't even ask them if she can stay with them because she doesn't want to be a burden to them. I'm like, girl, you are homeless. Like, shouldn't you be desperate to have a home? But she just doesn't want to burden them. She would rather live in a tent than be a bother to them. And I just, I think it's selfless, but at the same time, it's not very smart. You know how dangerous it is for a 16-year-old girl to live in a tent by herself in the woods? Not a very good idea. This is something that I never realized while watching the anime or reading the manga, but I don't understand how her grandfather just asks her if she can go stay with her friend while his home is being renovated and not check up on her if she actually went through with like having a place to stay, like not calling the parents. I found that really weird and that's not something I've never realized before until now. I've seen this anime like 20 times. I've read this manga for the fourth time now and that's something I never noticed but it's a good point. The parental situation going on is like really weird and I don't know if minorship is a big deal in Japan. Like maybe that's it. That's like not a big deal for teenagers to go their own way without their parents. Um, supervision or guidance than it is in like America but it just was kind of weird to me. I don't know maybe the culture is different. I find it sad but yet like so heartwarming that Toru is trying to finish high school just to um, make her mother happy because her mother never graduated high school. She only graduated junior high so especially since her mom has died she really wants to finish high school because she, her mother never got to and she like wants to make her mother proud and that's like so heartwarming and just so beautiful but throughout this series I feel like she tries to do so many things that her mom would want her to do but doesn't make her own decisions and at the same time like that's such an admirable trait to want to um, appease your dead loved one like that's amazing but at the same time she really never makes her own decisions and that's something she kind of starts to realize throughout the series basically more towards the end of the book um, but at this moment she's still like I want to like do what my mom never did I want to make my mom proud which is great but like I wish she would make her own decisions now and then and again when Yuki and Shigure at, ask her to live with them she was just like no like she flat out refuses because she doesn't want to bother them I'm like they are offering for you to live with them and you're homeless, like take the chance. And even when Shigure says like, you're gonna be the housekeeper, like you're gonna earn your keep here. She's still like, no, I'm like girl. Sometimes she's just too perfect. Sometimes she just is too nice. She is the one character that is just too nice. I'm like, you should be desperate to find a home where you're safe. So Kyo shows up, my book boyfriend, not even kidding, I love him so much. And the minute he shows up, Toru bumps into him and he turns into a cat. And her reaction to bumping into um, Kyo, Shigure, and Yuki and them all turning into animals is just so funny because of course she's in disbelief. She's like, what the heck is happening? That's how I would react. Um, but then she runs through the house and the mailman, um, actually I think in the manga it's a, it's a food delivery person, but in the and then anime was a mailman. They changed that for some reason. But the guy comes in and delivers the food. And she's like, they're animals, help me. And he's like, yeah, they're animals. She never says that they were, they're humans turn into animals. She's just like, they're animals. He doesn't understand. He just thinks they're pets. <laughs> but 
that was just funny how she just reacted that way. She's like so over the top, but at the same time I can understand her reaction because I would probably do the same thing. And then Shigure explains the whole situation, why the Soma family turns into animals, and the whole backstory behind it. They're all possessed by each member of the Zodiac, and how when they're hugged by a member of the opposite sex, they change into animals. So now Tora knows everything, and because of that, she is at risk for getting her memories taken away so that she doesn't know about this curse because it's super secret. And the first time I read this, or the first time I watched the anime, because I watched the anime before reading the manga, I was like, no. I was so interested in like seeing how she was going to deal with living in with this family. I did not want her to get her memories taken away, but of course if that had happened we would ha have had no story. So thankfully that didn't happen. For some reason Akito is like, no, she can stay there. And he has very shady ra reasons for having her stay there. That comes up later. But at the moment I was like happy that she was going to be living with these boys because it sounded like it was going to be a fun time. I also love her reaction when they <laughs> When they turn back and they're naked, she just flips out. She is so over the top. Sometimes I just love that about her. One reason why I don't like Yuki is because he doesn't like Kyo. That's actually probably the main reason I don't like him. Because I am team Kyo and Yuki just hates him so much. Which I don't... Well, at the same time, I do understand because the feud between the rat and the cat has been going on for generations. Like, the cat and the rat hate each other because the rat deceived the cat. Um, from preventing and preventing him not going to the Zodiac party. So like I understand because of the whole myth and everything but at the same time Yuki knows how much crap Kyo has been through in his life and he still treats him just so horribly. I'm like can't you go easy on him? But at the same time like I said the rat is supposed to hate the cat but I mean if, Yuki just forget about the curse and like understand that Kyo has had a hard enough life already. He doesn't need you giving him all this crap. One thing I loved is how Yuki was always so afraid of someone finding out about his curse because Akito told him when he was really young that anyone who finds out about his curse is going to hate you. Like he like instilled that in his mind. So for his whole life Yuki was like if someone finds out about my curse like they're gonna not want to be around me anymore. But Toru being the sweet girl she is um she asked him that if she does get her memories erased, like, will you still be my friend? And that was just, like, so beautiful because this is after she accidentally changes him into a rat at school. And she tells him that this and Yuki is just, like, so happy. Like, even though I don't like Yuki, sometimes I do feel th through him for him throughout this book because he has also had a hard life. All these characters have had terrible lives, so I still feel for him at some point. So I just really loved how... Toru was just so accepting of him. I'm also gonna bring up the parental guidance thing again because Kyo disappeared for like four months and no one thought to go look for him. <laughs> they just was like, oh Kyo's gone, I guess that's that. Like no one looked for him, he's part of your family and you know this family doesn't really care about the cat in the first place so I understand that but he's still like a kid. It was just like so weird how no one went looking for him. He was gone for so long and just no one thought anything of it. Like, where is the parental guidance in this book? Like, at least he was with his legal guardian, which is his master, his um, martial arts master. But still, like, the rest of his family just didn't think anything of it. Not really realistic. I relate to Kyo so much because he has very... <laughs> Bad social issues. He does not do well in social situations at all. When he first gets to school, he absolutely goes berserk when like all the girls are around him. He almost breaks a girl's arm for touching him. Like he just does not react well in social situations. And that's one of his biggest flaws. He does not know how to interact with people. And I think that's because I kind of realized this while I was reading this. He is used to people being just so terrible to him. He is used to people hating him. That it kind of makes sense that even with strangers, he would be very hostile. Like, it totally makes sense because all his life, everyone he's known has treated him so terribly. So it kind of makes sense that he would just go absolutely insane while in social situations. 
but still he overreacts because he gets so mad and violent and it's just something he has to learn to get through being around people especially if he's going to be going to school again now and fortunately he does learn to be more polite and more mature when he's with people throughout the series but at the beginning he is just so violent like it's almost scary going back to Kyo and Yuki their dynamic is really interesting in how they view each other this volume really um, shows how Yuki views Kyo and how he's jealous of it him and it's because Kyo wants so badly to be part of the Soma family um, and he wants to be like a part of the Zodiac because he knows the Zodiac is what brings the family together so he wants to be a part of his family so bad and he doesn't want them to hate him and yet Yuki wants to get out of this family he hates it he does not like the Zodiac dynamic he wants no part of it so he doesn't understand why Kyo wants so badly to be a part of the Zodiac when he struggles his whole life to get away from it. He wants nothing to do with the curse. And that's just funny how he's jealous of Kyo in that way. Both of them are such polar opposites in that way, but yet it makes sense for Kyo to really want to be a part of this family because he has never had a family and he wants one so bad. So it just kind of makes sense for him to want to be a part of the Zodiac, but Yuki just doesn't really understand it. So I found that really interesting how he's jealous of Kyo because of that. Because Kyo does not work well with people, he like goes off on Toru instantly. <laughs> and it's not because he doesn't like her, like you always know that he's always had a soft spot for her, but he just doesn't know how to respond to people. He doesn't know how to keep his temper down. So he like lashes out of um with her instantly but then immediately regrets it he feels so terrible so he's always had just this soft spot for Toru which I don't understand how you couldn't because she's just such a sweetheart so it was just kind of cool to see him really regret lashing out at someone finally because he's like Toru did not deserve that uh, it's just so sweet I love when he has a conversation with Shigure where Kyo's telling him like he feels bad for lashing out at Toru he is upset that he just can't get along with people in general. He just feels like he's a terrible person because he just pushes people away all the time and he gets upset with them. But Shigure just says something that like really hit me really hard. Because as a socially anxious person myself, I could just really relate to this. And this is straight from the mangas. So Shigure says, people aren't born social. Sure, it comes easier for some people, but most people like you need to work at it. Some more than others, you're just inexperienced. For example, as a martial artist, you have the strength to break the table with your fist, but you also have the self-control to stop your fist right before it hits the table, which is actually such a good analogy. So much. I love that. And then he goes on to say, you weren't born with that control, were you? You had to refine it. It's the same as interacting with people, but training for that isn't in the mountains. It has to be in town where people live. Mingling with people, hurting them, getting hurt by them, that's how you learn about others and about yourself. If you don't, you'll never be able to care about anyone but yourself. You may be a black belt fighter, but you're still a white belt in dealing with people. For the sake of the girl who will one day tell you she loves you, don't run away, keep training. I just love that, especially um, what he says to Kyo, especially the last part when he says, for the sake of the girl who will one day tell you she loves you, don't run away because... Um, if you've read this, you know he eventually falls in love with Toru and she loves him back. So that just kind of reminded me all of that, which is so true. I love this whole thing because he's basically saying that it takes work to get yourself to be a social person and to gain the confidence to get along with people. And that's what he's telling him. And that's something that I really took to heart because I think without confidence, it's really hard to get along well with people and like to be friends so I just really related to that like that's a lesson that was like really good for me I just Shigure says the smartest things sometimes I just love him and then when he goes to meet Toru in the forest while she's coming home from work she tells him how much she loves the cat from the zodiac and he's she's like I love you because you're the cat and it flashes back to to, to um Shigure saying if a girl told you she loved you like you have to train for that and 
Toro just told him she loves him and he's just like blushes. It's just the cutest thing. Like you didn't expect for a girl to tell you she loved you that quickly, huh? <laughs> just so sweet. This is something that Toru says when she's like having a conversation with Yuki and I just really liked how she said it because it was very thought provoking. Um, she says that her mom told her it's better to trust people than to doubt them. She said that people aren't born with kind hearts. When we are born, all we have are desires for food and material things, selfish instincts. Um, but she said that kindness is something that grows inside of each person's body, but it's up to us to nurture that kindness in our hearts. That's why kindness is different for every person. I found that to be so true because when you're first born, it's like a clean slate. Like, you're not automatically a kind person person because you have not really built a personality yet all you want are like food and material things because you're just wanting to survive but kindness is something that you have to kind of build up as you grow um some people will be horrible and some people will be super kind it's all what they decide to be so i found that just so thought-provoking how she said that like her mother was just such a smart smart person and I also think it has to do with how you're raised and nurtured it really um has an impact on who you are as a person and how kind and nice you're going to be and since you know Toru's mother was so so nice and kind that's why Toru is the way she is but it's what she said is just so true so Kagura is introduced in this book which she is the pig or the boar and <laughs> she is a handful she is in love with Kyo, and she expresses her love by beating him up. <laughs> and it's funny because the boar um, in this series is known as an animal who always takes things head first and is really rough. So it re really relates to her personality in that way. So I like that correlation. But she just, like, she expresses her love by going berserk and just hurting Kyo when you love him. But, like, you're beating him up. <laughs> but she's like, that's how I express my love. But I'm like, poor Kyo. <laughs> <laughs> he has to get hurt every time he sees her. And I love this line when she's like, when we were little, um, he said that he'd make me his bride. And Kyo says, that's because you threatened me to. <laughs> it's sad when you have to threaten someone you like to be your husband when you're going to kill them if they don't. Like, that's not the way to go about it. One of my favorite scenes in the anime and in the manga when it comes to Kyo and Toru is their conversation on the rooftop when... He was expressing how much he loves martial arts and how much he loves his master. He just like comes alive when he talks about martial arts, which is so cool to see because as someone who is so like closed off and who keeps to himself and is angry all the time, when he's talking about martial arts, something he loves, that's when he just is so animated and happy. And I found that really interesting because even if someone is really closed off and just not that social um if they're talking about something they love it's a totally different story like I'm someone who I'm pretty anti-social I do not do good in social situations but whenever I'm talking about like for example books or music I just can talk and talk and talk <laughs> and so the fact that Keo gets so talkative and like happy when he's talking about martial arts is just so realistic in that way because martial arts is something that he loves that's his hobby so I found that really cool so because her grandfather's renovations on his house is done she moves out of the Soma house and back with her family oh my god her family was just terrible oh my gosh I don't understand why they were so rude to her when her mother just died for god's sake and they just treat her like absolute crap they accuse her of being pretty much a slut because she was with living with three guys when th she's anything but she's the most innocent thing in the world like I don't even think her family really knows her because she would never <laughs> act that way but they were just so critical of her and just so so terrible except for her grandpa her grandpa was like apologizing for their behavior which her grandpa is awesome and so sweet in that way but ugh her, the rest of her family was just awful. So I was glad when Kyo and Yuki rescued, rescued her from the house and they told her to come back and live with them. And the conversation she has with Kyo after that was really hard hitting. He told her, you need to speak up for yourself. If you don't want to do something, don't 
do it because she does so many things just to please people and so that's why she went to live with her family. She didn't want to leave the Selma. She loved it there. But she didn't want to upset her grandfather because her grandfather was being so nice, giving her a place to live. So she felt obligated to stay there. But she wanted to be with the Selmas. And Kia was like, you need to speak up for yourself. If you don't want to do something, don't do it. And after he says that, she says to take her home. She finally says what she wants. Oh my god, I got the feels right then. I'm glad Kyo finally got through to her because of that, because she's just way too nice. And in this volume, you get insight on how the title of the series applies to the manga, because when Tor was younger with her class, she would play Fruits Basket, which you, if you don't know what Fruits Basket is, um, I played it before actually. I used to play it in like high school actually. <laughs> Basically each person is like assigned a fruit, and when one person says the fruit's name, if you're the fruit that's assigned to you, I think you're supposed to. It's been a while since I played it, but you have to like switch seats or something. I think that's how it goes. I don't know. <laughs> but um, her classmates assigned her as the rice ball, and rice ball isn't a fruit. Um, but she was like, okay, she just went with it. And while everyone was calling out different types of fruits' names, she just sat there. And she looks back on... Um, that event and was like really applied it to her life nowadays where she feels like she's the rice ball she feels like she doesn't belong anywhere because she didn't belong with the rest of the fruits so she applies it to the Soma family she's like I'm the rice ball in this situation so I don't belong with them but then when she goes back to the house um, it flashes back to the times when she is playing um, Fruits Basket with her class and then um, someone calls out Rice Ball. And that's just like the simplest little touch, but it made such an impact because it is an illustration of how now she feels like she's a part of this family. She feels like she belongs with them. And I'm going to cry because that is just so beautiful. Oh my god, I love that. Just It's the simplest little thing, the simplest illustration, but how it applies to her living with the Somas, it's just oh, it's so beautiful because she, she feels accepted now. She feels like she belongs. It gives me so many feels. And my star rating on the first volume is of course 5 out of 5 stars. I don't know how I couldn't give it 5 out of 5 stars. It's just a masterpiece. So that's where the manga, that volume, ends. This discussion took way longer than I thought it was going to be. I think I'm going to have to split up this vlog in parts. I'm thinking I'll like discuss every third volume, even less than that. So there's going to be like a maybe like 10 episodes of this vlog. I don't know. I just don't want this video to go on too long. Um, I just have a lot to say on these books. So tomorrow I'm going to start on volume 2. Um, I don't remember what happened in volume 2, but I know the series just gets better and better, so I'm excited to keep on rereading this series. Um, so I will be back tomorrow and discuss volume 2 and discuss how it went. So I'll see you guys later. Hey, it is day 2 and it is almost midnight and I have not picked up volume 2 yet, but I'm going to do it right now. I just was not able to read this throughout the day and probably won't finish it before this day is over and might not even finish it at all once a week because it's late but like I'm gonna try my best to read at least a few chapters but if I don't finish it tonight then it's whatever I can always pick up on it tomorrow and catch up um, but right before I go to bed I'm just gonna get back into this I'm gonna go wash off my makeup get into bed and just read for a little while and I'm actually in a reading slump right now I just found that out I just do not feel like reading but manga is a different format of reading so it's a lot easier to read so I can just read manga instead of reading novels because I think I need that break right now and like Fruits Basket is the perfect outlet for that perfect option so I'm gonna go and I will be back for day three why the heck does Yuki look like such a girl here like if I had never known this manga and I just opened up to this page, I would have been like, um, that is a girl. <laughs> he looks like such a girl. It makes me laugh. Hey, so it is day three, and I have not picked up any manga today at all. I'm During the day, I'm really not going to be reading as much because 
I have a lot going on that I have to take care of during the day, so um, that's not going to leave a room for a lot of reading. So my reading of this series is just probably going to happen at night. Right now it is almost 9 o'clock, so I am ready to read some more manga, continue reading volume 2 because I did not finish it last night, but I have not uploaded a video in a while. I think it's been like almost a week, so I want to edit a video right now so I have a video to put up tomorrow, so that's what I'm going to do before I start reading. And then after that, I will read as much as I can. I'm going to try to finish volume 2 and move on to volume 3 if I have time. I killed some time before getting into editing, before getting into this manga by watching The Bachelor. I could not help myself. I was really looking forward to the finale, so I had to see um, what was going to happen. I watched part one. Every year, the host, Chris Harrison, says like it's the most dramatic finale ever, and I'm like, um, okay, yeah, right. You're just exaggerating. I always feel like they say that just to hype you up, and I know they do, but Honestly, this finale is actually, it was pretty intense. I did not expect any of that to happen. I won't say what happened just in case um, anyone watching this watches the show and hasn't seen the finale yet. Like, I won't spoil anything, but um, all, all I'll say is that Colton made the right decision, I feel like. Like, he made a good decision. He, like, followed his intuition, um, so I really admire him for that, but, like... That was intense. <laughs> so now I don't know what's going to happen um, in the second part that happens tomorrow. And this first part left off on a cliffhanger and I am pissed because I'm like, I want to know what happens. Oh my god, worst cliffhanger ever. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the actual finale tomorrow night. So I want to see how that goes. But anyway, this video is not about The Bachelor. <laughs> so I'm going to go and edit my video and then I'll come back um, before I start moving on to volume 2 and update on what's going on. So I'll see you later. Okay, I just finished editing my video and now it's currently um, exporting so I'm gonna upload that in a little while, schedule it for tomorrow. Um, it was my 24 hour readathon vlog which obviously is uploaded by now so if you want to check that vlog out if you haven't seen it I will link it on the screen so you can do that if you're interested in seeing more vlogs for me it'll be there. So I am going to continue reading volume 2 of Fruits Basket um, and I think I'm only going to read volume 2 tonight I'm only going to finish this because I am exhausted. This entire day I've been so tired. I have not been sleeping well lately. Um, usually I don't sleep well at all, like that's normal for me. Um, but the past week I've been sleeping terribly and I think that's just because I've been under a lot more stress than usual lately. So that's why I'm not sleeping well. So, which is depressing. <laughs> so after I finish um, that volume, I'm just going to go right to bed. Um, I want to get try to get to bed early so I'll get enough sleep for tomorrow because I really need it. Um, and then tomorrow I'll try to read volumes 3 and 4 just so I can catch up because I'm really behind on what I schedule for myself to read the series before the anime comes out. So um, I'm going to try to read two volumes tomorrow and I th that might happen. We'll just see how that goes. So that is the last clip from me tonight for day three. I will see you tomorrow for day four, which will be the last day for part one. So, good night. <laughs> if it's night there, good night. Whatever day it is um, for you. I'm so tired and I'm just speaking nonsense, so I'm gonna go. <laughs> see you guys. guys, so it is day four. Um, I have read some more Fruits Basket Day. I have started on volume three and I'm like three chapters into it, so I'm gonna try to finish it tonight. It is currently 11, almost 11.30 
and right now I have been editing this vlog. This vlog at the point where I'm at right now is 34 minutes long. That is a long, long, long video. So um, because of that, I'm going to stop this vlog here. This will be the last clip. I was only able to discuss the first volume. Um, but because of that, I think what's going to happen is I'm only going to discuss one volume per vlog because when I was discussing the first volume I just went on and on and on because I had so much I wanted to say and I think that's going to be the same for every volume so I'll probably be only talking about one volume per vlog one volume discussion so that's probably how it's going to go but I think that's fine I think I can deal with that um I'm gonna go back into reading this try to finish it tonight um might move on to volume four before going to bed. We'll see how I feel. If I'm too tired, then obviously not, but I'll just get to it um, tomorrow. So that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. And episode two will be coming out soon. And in episode two, I will be um, discussing my thoughts on um, volume two and maybe volume three if the video doesn't turn out to be too long. So. I'll be back with another one of these really soon. And if you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more bookish related videos and for more um, vlogs on the Fruits Basket series as I read it. And with that said, I'll be back really soon. Bye.